Welcome to another episode of the Bug Bite, hosted by your Shirley Tech Coach Ralph, where we're engineer twin. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about Google, YouTube, hackers getting past two-factor authentication. Say what? Yes. How did these hackers get by? How did they get past Google's and YouTube's two-factor authentication? Say it ain't so. Let's jump into it to see what in the world is going on in these streets of cybersecurity, all right? So let's just go right now. So this article is brought to us by Forbes. It is called Gmail and YouTube hackers bypass Google's two-factor authentication account security. How in the world does this happen? Dave, Davey Winder is going to let us know, a senior contributor to Forbes, all right? So let's get into it. All right, so it starts off. Desperate Gmail and YouTubers are turning to official and unofficial Google support forms after hackers take over their account, bypassing two-factor authentication, 2FA security, and then locking them out. Mm -mm -mm. Time and time again, the attackers appear to be part of a cryptocurrency scam supposedly giving away Ripple XRP to those responding. See, and that's the first red flag, first red flag, giving away Ripple XRP. When does that ever happen, right? No one gives away anything, all right? So there's always something attached to it. Strings always attached. So be mindful, be careful, be wary, all right? Let's keep going. So let's go to some updates from this. Google, look, Google users take to support forms as hackers target Gmail and YouTube accounts. If you scan the various support forms for Google, products such as Gmail and YouTube, including Google's own official forums and those on Reddit, you will always see desperate people asking about account recovery. And guess what? They're not only desperate about their account recovery, they're desperate in general because if they were desperate, they wouldn't be falling for these scams, right? These usually relate to someone forgetting the password, having their phone stolen, changing telephone numbers, and so on. However, when you see a pattern emerging of people whose accounts have been hacked despite having two-factor authentication activated and being unable to recover their accounts, you know something out of the ordinary is happening. Hmm, something smells a little bit fishy. All right. So they change the two-factor authentication. Account recovery is not working and sends me on a loop, right? Loops are, are helpful sometimes, but not in this case, right? The hackers change the password and the phone number and also edited the two-factor authentication settings. How in the world did they do that? My account, which was 2FA authenticated, can't log in. Password box says in password changed 25 hours ago. How could I have changed the password 25 hours ago when I was trying to get me some XRP ripple on the house for the low, low, all right? Cannot recover because the genius hacker has changed the recovery email to the same email and deleted my number two. How unfortunate, how unfortunate. See, this is what our greed leads us to. All right, so aside from the number of accounts compromised despite having the 2FA protection in place, there appears to be another common denominator in the form of Ripple Labs cryptocurrency or rather scams leveraging XRP. All right, so let's keep, let's keep reading. Ripple Labs issue XRP cryptocurrency scam warning. So they, they will not, they will be, they will not be held liable for what the scammers are doing. And then what you, yes, you right there. Yeah, you, 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 yep, yep. What you fall victim to because of your read. Ripple has taken to X in attempt, in an attempt to spread awareness of the increasing spate of attacks against Gmail and YouTube accounts which are then used to entrap readers and viewers with a variety of scams. The most common of these is what is known as a crypto doubling scam, which, which promises, they promise, and whenever you hear a promise, be wary because people, they, they, they don't hold to their promises, all right? Which promises to refund twice amount of XRP that someone sends to what purports to be a genuine Ripple management account. Some of the compromised YouTube accounts have for example, use deep fake generated videos of the Ripple Lab CEO, Brad Garlinghouse for authenticity. If you see Brad making a video asking you to send XRP to some random account, 
No, it's not Brad. It is not. I repeat, it is not Brad. We will not, we will not disparage the name of Brad in this scam. I don't know anything else about Brad, but I know he is not involved in this scam. In the scam. Put some respect on Brad Garlinghouse's name, all right? So let's keep going. In an in an ex post, in an ex posting published April 11th, Ripple Labs warned that it will never, I repeat, they will never, especially not Brad, Brad, Brad. Garlinghouse will never ask anyone to send XRP and points concerned readers to advice on how to avoid cryptocurrency scams, right? They're going to fall for it anyways because they, they, they think that any little thing will get them that competitive edge. They want that get rich scheme. They do not want to put in the work. So even if you put all the warnings in place, they will always fall for it, right? So how in the world did these hackers bypass 2FA security, two-factor authentication. How in the world, because that's what I'm wondering, how did they get around it, right? Let's, let's find out. The answer to the question, how do threat actors hack 2FA security is that they don't. They don't do it. You think that they did it, but they don't do it. They don't do it, right? So they simply bypass it altogether. It's most likely that the users who have found themselves locked out of their Google accounts with passwords and two-factor authentication details changed to prevent them from getting back in, have fallen victim to what is known as a session cookie hijack attack. Yep. This attack most often starts with a phishing email leading to a malware that can capture the session cookies that are designed to help users log in more quickly, get right back to where they left off, and so on. The trouble is, if a nefarious actor can get hold of these cookies after a user has logged in successfully, then they can essentially replay them and bypass the need for 2FA code. As far as the site is concerned, authentication has already been successful. The user is already logged in. Forbes contributor Zach Doffman has provided an overview of this attack methodology and some of the methods being employed to combat it. Maybe we'll review that next week because I'm interested to see the attack methodology and, and what are some ways that are being employed to combat to combat it. I'm going to say that without even reading his the, the, method, the methodology, from what I've seen, a lot of times when you go to like try to do certain changes like in GitHub or in, in Google, they will ask you to reauthenticate into certain parts of the site. So let's say you're, you're you're looking through your repo and stuff like that, you can push and everything like that. However, when you go to make changes to the account settings and stuff, It'll say, okay, now I need you to authenticate and we're going to use, we're going to push this code to your phone in order for you to get in. So those are some of the ways, like whenever you're doing like things that require a little bit more elevated privileges, they might start asking you to re-authenticate, right? And as well, lately, um, at least on YouTube, not necessarily on Google as a whole, but on YouTube, every so often my, 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 I have to log back in to my account. It's like, oh, your session ended, you have to get back in, right? So those are, those are probably some of the ways. Um, I know like using the authenticator app, things like that, where you actually need the device and stuff like that to, to be able to log in. But with, with, with these nefarious actors, what they can do is they can put like on whatever website they're sending you to. If, if, imagine if they add on their site, like in order to log in, you need to, to authenticate with Google. So now when you go in and, and you do that authentication and they, they're capturing your cookies, they can, they, can, they can have it right to a database and they say, oh, this, that, this, this cookie... Um, is for this and they know how long that, that Google authenticates it and stuff like that so that now they can, um, now that they can um, take that set, that, that session cookie and they can apply it and they get into your account and do all types of stuff, sending out spam, you know, so when, when, when we get that email at two o'clock in the morning saying that, hey, this person wants you to see, yeah, right? So that's what we have to be aware of, okay? So let's keep going. Google says users have seven days to recover hacked 2FA accounts. I reached out to Google about the session cookie hijacking problem, which is acknowledged, which it acknowledges is a long existing problem for account security across the internet. So many people get, get, get fooled by this, right? There are techniques we use and continuously update to detect and block suspicious access, indicating potential stolen cookies. A Google spokesperson told me, which not me, but told Davey, the person who's writing this article, in addition to pushing forward innovations like device-bound session credentials, for those users who have already been hacked and their second factor and recovery factors have changed, 
all is not lost, thank goodness, according to Google. Our automated account recovery process allows a user to use their original recovery factors for up to seven days after it changed, the spokesperson says, provided they set it up before the incident. So stop right now, pause the video, go over into your Google account, set up your two-factor authentication so that if one of the if you go chasing down a crypto scam to try to get some free XRP, not, not even free, double the return of XRP, which you're not gonna get, but and you're gonna lose whatever you invested. And then they and then they end up getting your 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 session cookie and then they start doing all types of locking you out, doing nefarious activities on your account. Go set up your 2FA right now, right now. Pause the video, go do it right now, and then come back and we'll finish this off. But go go do it. And then so that way, if you end up being a victim, you can actually you can get your stuff back. You can get your stuff back, right? So be be, be mindful, be wary, okay? See, the, the, see, see that, see that right there? Bandit? Those little rascals. Are, are, are trying to, to harm you, okay? So when it comes to general account security hygiene, hygiene is important. Google recommends, they ensure, Google recommends they ensure the account is set up for recovery so to ensure less friction if they ever need to regain access for whatever reason. For additional protection, we continue to encourage users to take advantage of security tools like Passkey and Google Security Checkup, the spokesperson concludes. All right, is there anything else to go with this? Yes, all right, cool. So let's read this up. So it's not just scamming hackers looking to leverage one cryptocurrency for another that YouTube users need to be alert to, especially if they are gamers. So for all you gamers out there, be, be, be mindful of this. Actually, let me pull focus a little tighter here. Those YouTubers who are pirate gamers are most at risk. So all you pirates out there, are you pirates? I'm the captain now. Look at me. Look at you. I'm the captain now. Okay? I'm the captain now. I'm the captain now. All right, all right enough, enough. Enough, all right? Threat researchers at, at Proofpoint have analyzed numerous YouTube channels that are distributing information, stealing malware, and targeting the gamer community, all right? The Proofpoint emerging threat researchers say that a range of information stealing malware is being disseminated via YouTube channels and purporting to be pirated video games or associated software cracks. Using video descriptions as bait, promising viewers tips on how to download video games for free, the link actually ends up taking the user to sites delivering a malware payload instead. A payload. A payload of malware. We don't want that. Now that's a payload, all right? If this all sounds bad enough already, be prepared as it gets worse. Oh my goodness. It, how can it get any worse than this, right? So many of these accounts that are hosting malicious videos appear to be compromised or otherwise acquired from legitimate users, the researchers said, and that's not even the worst part yet. And, and that's why they're, they're going after your, your, your Google account, right? Because Google, YouTube, Gmail, all of them are connected together. So now, now... They get into it. The postings also appear to be targeting a young demographic with links professing to be about games popular with children. Not the children. Why the children? Something, the researcher said, which makes this particular distribution methodology notable. A range of different information stealing malware was found to be distributed this way, including Luma, Stealer, SteelC, and Vidar. There were also, the researchers said, multiple distinct activity clusters distributing information stealers via YouTube. This means it isn't possible to, uh, to attribute the campaigns to any specific threat actor or cyber crime group. However, the common denominator is, that, is the technical methods employed which were seen to be similar. Besides the gaming lures, the attackers all use similar antivirus disabling instructions along with a method of bloating similar file sizes in an effort to get around security protections. I, I am not a fan of bloating. I hate being bloated. And that's why I'm very, very careful with what I eat. Bloating, whether it's in software or in regular life, is not a fun thing to go through, right? What the proof point researchers can say with certainty is that the attackers are persistently targeting YouTube consumers rather than enterprise users. As for the specifics, Proofpoint cites one compromised YouTube account with 113,000, yes, thousand users and a gray verification checkmark. They're verified by YouTube. 
Nearly all the videos posted by this account were more than a year old. Well, you got to get on your content, buddy. But, oh, oh, and those all use the, the Thai language in the video and their descriptions. However, however, there were also 12 new English language videos posted within a single 24-hour period. So they went from nothing for a year, bad content strategy, to 20 to 12 new videos within 24 hours, and they were all in English. So they learned English very quickly, and they went on a massive work spree, or not, or not. See, what happened was, these had English descriptions linking to malicious sites and were related to video game cracks. The researchers recommended YouTubers that YouTube users look for significant gaps between time uh, of time between the videos posted, content that vastly differs from previously published videos, differences in language, along with malicious links in the description. The latter, sadly, is easier said than done for many. All right, do your research, folks. Across the course of its investigation, the proof point emerging threats researchers said that they reported more than a couple dozen accounts distributing malware to YouTube users. All of the reported content has been removed by YouTube, all right? Thank you so much, Davey Winder. Davey Winder is a four decade, four, four decade, that's 40 years, what I just learned last week. Four decade veteran technology journalist and contributing editor at PC Pro Magazine, a position he has held since the first issue was published in 1994. Amazing work, Davey. We really, really appreciate your article. So there you have it. There you have it. Protect yourself at all costs, whether it is out on the street, whether it's on the mats in jiu-jitsu or Muay Thai or whatever it is that you may be doing, or whether you are on the main streets of the internet and YouTube, protect yourself at all costs. You do not want to be a victim, a victim chasing after free XRP or pirated games on YouTube. You don't want to be a victim. Do not follow a victim because it's embarrassing. And after all these warnings, you've been warned, you know, you know, so be careful, be diligent, be vigilant, vigilant, right? All right. So that is the plan. We're going to get out of here. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I hope you had a great time with me reviewing this article and learning how to protect yourself better against these scammers out here on YouTube. All right. So, and, and, and like I said, don't go chasing after XRP. If you haven't done so already, do me a big, big favor, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can know every time that we go live. And if you are in need of additional assistant, additional content, looking to level up your technical skills, go over to www.techcoachroff.dev where you can sign up for a free, free, not free, where you can sign up for a coaching plan, one-on-one -on -one coaching plan with me, where I will help you level up as well as get access to exclusive content that I put specifically for you to help you level up, to help you get the right skills, the right mindset to go out there and win, to go out there and dominate. That is what we're going to do. All right. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, this is Tech Coach Ralph and we are out. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.